Sorry, that cut off abruptly. You have to always continually encourage children. Um, yeah, because if you don't, they'll start believing whatever lies are told or said about them. Look at the lake down there. I don't think I want to go too close to the lake, though. Okay, so number three. Let's move on. Okay, so number three, I've seen some of your earlier videos and it's amazing to see how far your channel has come. So yeah, y'all know my channel is not a baby channel, even though it's baby as far as um, the reach and things like that. And as far as um, the achievements, I'm, a st I'm still a baby channel, but in actuality, my channel's hitting 10 years old. And I basically have for 10 years been grinding and trying to figure out how to, I mean, basically since social media has come out, I have been trying to figure out how to use social media to um, pursue my art and my message. Basically, those are the two biggest things in my life that I want to get out, my art and my message. So, um yeah i have grown tremendously but i got so far to go um and i am just glad okay so within the last of uh, last year when they first started coming out with these youtube shorts until this this part of this year um basically i haven't had much growth so it was just exponential like over the last few months right and for me it's just amazing so you're thinking about going from like i said earlier a channel that nobody like literally nobody um is watching to except for yourself which was me to a channel where now um quite a bit of people are watching daily like that is so crazy to me hold on just got a notice up there uh, you know we too close when we see a notice let me show y'all the lake look at the lake i can't read what that notice say yet i might get a tad bit closer so i can read it after that we finna get back yeah i think it's a gator and snake i can't see it can y'all see it it's that little notice there that one girl from here it looked like it got the yeah it looked like it got the shape of a gator so we're gonna back away from right here <laughs> even though you got people over there fishing and stuff <laughs> and then i see the little snake shape and your girl do not like snakes so we definitely gonna get back but yeah you got a gazebo over here people hanging out over there but um I'm happy. I'm, I literally am happy about the growth I'm seeing. It's something. And the thing is, before I had nothing to work with. So, I mean, I'm not the biggest. I see plenty of shorts get more um, traction than mine get. But, I mean, I got to stop that comparison thing. Like, that comparison is basically like a downfall. And it'll basically leave you feeling like nothing when you constantly compare. So though i am not to where i want this channel to be um, i'm not what other people's standards of being successful would be um, i'm still happy so happy with the growth i've experienced and thank you so much for noticing it as well because girl i have literally been working super duper hard well, i guess they got some kind of event over here <laughs> That's crazy. They got everything. See, they doing something right there. <laughs> okay, so number four. Ugh, gnats out here. Okay, that leads into question four, which is, how is it that you intend to use your channel to achieve your goals? Okay, so I might leave at, leave off at five. I did have 10 questions. Um, I'm sorry if I do not get to your question because I didn't know I would, girl, you should have known I would know that I would go off on tangents and when get to the question that quickly, <laughs> y'all already know how I am and I should have known that. But, um, so this is question number four. 
but question number four is basically like how do I intend to oh hold on let me read it again so I think I'm missing something in the question okay let me read question number four again Yes, that leads to question four. How is it that you intend to use your channel? Okay, I'm sorry, to achieve your goals. Okay, so two things. I have two goals, two major goals in my life. Um, the first major goal is, which is I've been chasing for 22 years since my husband was basically snatched from us. And y'all know it's to get my husband back home. That has been my dream almost forever, like forever. And it's taking forever to achieve. Um, but that's the ultimate goal in my life is that I want my family back whole. Um, so the channel, I believe, can achieve that by basically getting the story out there. Um, I think the biggest hurdle and the biggest reason that I am not getting the basically what I'm looking for which is justice is because nobody knows Marcello's story. Marcello is just another random name. He's just another random number and he is just another statistic. Yes, another statistic. And like I said before, we don't care about statistics. We don't care about numbers. Um, so why would you care about Marcello, you know, he's just a random. So through this channel and through telling his story and through you guys gaining almost like a virtual relationship with me, you know, when you're in relationship with somebody, um, what hurts them hurts you. Basically, um, that's how I feel like anything that hurts money. I'm like, oh my gosh, that hurts me. I literally cannot let her go through this pain. I got to figure something out, you know, and that's what we tend to do. Hold on, it's a little dark. That's what we tend to do with our loved ones, right? So through this channel, by making myself um, or making it where you can know me on a different basis than just on a, or on a different level than just knowing that I'm the girl that, hey, whose husband is wrongfully convicted. And it's almost like study hearing that story. You almost feel as though I'm whining about it or you start to feel like, girl, shut up and sit down. Don't you think about anything else? Like you start to actually see me as the full human that I am. Um, and you might actually start developing a bond with me or with, that says, that's the park office. That's cute. They got it set up like a little neighborhood. Park office over there. This is a really nice park. It's a little drive. It's a little drive away from our house, but it's worth the drive. It's very peaceful and relaxing. A lot of areas I could set up and just draw my girl. But um, yeah, so you like that. You're getting to know me as more than just the girl that wants her husband home. You're getting to know me as the artist that I am and have been. You're getting to know me as the goofy Kita or the jokester. Because before this weight of fighting for Marcello, I was a girl always playing practical jokes or laughing or coming up with quick, um, um, fun things to say that like just takes you you know like like takes you by notice and you're like oh my gosh that's kind of funny like that was me before all of this that was me always doing something goofy um dressing weird bright colors all of that was me um and i think a little of it got suppressed because of the situation at hand but i never lost those parts of me basically but at least now you're getting to see those things um, basically manifest in this channel. And the thing is, I had someone tell me, like, girl, you are fighting for justice. Like, you can't be getting on there laughing and joking and stuff. They're not going to, people are not going to take you serious. And I'm like, but if I come in the regular way, like, angry about the situation, which I very much am angry about them snatching my husband from my household when he could have been a lot far better 
um, part of society just being, you know, the father and the husband in the household. Whoa, what a relief it would have been off of my back. And also, it would have been... <sighs> Do you, I'm, you're speaking to somebody who grew up with their father. It is an honor to have a father in your life. I would not be the person that I am without growing up with both mother and father. So if money was able to do that, that would have been just a, a precious gift, a precious gift. But just to come across as angry because it does anger me but to not put my other aspects of my um, personality in there like um, the joy that I feel the happiness that I feel in being with other kids and young people and going places and doing things and creating my art you don't see me as a full person you see me as just this flat layer of angry woman about her husband being wrongfully convicted. But by me putting all the other pieces together on here, you get to see the full story. You get to see me, Money, and Marcello as an actual real family. Yes, we are an alternative way of having a family because this is, it's becoming a normal, but it's not quite normal, you know what I mean? Um, but it's putting basically a face to the statistic we are the ones that are hurt through this system and then also the part of um basically putting a face to marcello is no longer the the black guy that most likely did the crimes he's accused of he's marcello jackson a loved one a um a man a human first before even being named as being black like for real we're human first but yeah i think that's what it's gonna and i think as it gets bigger as as i grow bigger i think more people are gonna care more people are gonna listen um because that's what decides whether you listen to a story or not does it catch your attention and do you care about the issue do you care about the person that is bringing the issue to you you know um, so I think that's how the channel is going to do and obtain that. Just I, I just got to reach more people. Like I said, Project Reach the World uh, that started so long ago. That's what God put in my heart all these many years. Project Reach the World. Okay, so let's go ahead and do number five. And then I'll have to just do a part two maybe later tonight. Uh, my cousin, I do got to get home soon because um, my cousin is doing a um, late Mother's Day. Um, oh, they got volleyball over there too, girl. Y'all see it? The boy playing volleyball. It's hard to see behind me. Oh no, you can't see it yet. But um, yeah, my cousin's doing a late Mother's Day dinner. Um, my cousin, the underscore almighty Mac, the blind chef. I can't see it on the recording, but it's right over there. Yeah, some volleyball places. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, we used to play volleyball back in the day. But, um, yeah, but he's going to cook for us. So he, he made a dinner today. Um, he is the blind chef. Um, I can link his channel in the description box. He does everything blind. Um, on, I think it, what is it? On TikTok, he goes by everything's blind. But um, yeah, so he's making that because he was sick last week and he said he felt bad about not being able to do anything for Mother's Day. So I gotta kind of wrap this up so that we could go out there with him. Okay, so number five. Let's say, this is the question, um, let's say your husband is ultimately freed. What's going to be next? Ooh, girl, that's a, that's a long, that's, that's going to be a long question to answer. So I'll answer. I'm going to put this book down because my hands are going to bed. My carpal tunnel. My carpal tunnel is so much worse because y'all know that I had to stop the chiropractor. <sighs> 
can't even feel my fingertips to put this put this thing in the bag. Oh, shaking my hand. Look at that that statue there. Let me read it. It says, "In love and memory of Miss Van Treese Russell, opening Russell Home for Atypical Children on Holden Ave." Oh, that's cool. Okay, so I think we're gonna go across this bridge that's right there behind me. This is weird because I can't flip my camera so I have to turn around, but that bridge there. We're gonna head across that bridge and then we'll head back to the car. So hopefully I can answer that question uh, within that time frame. So what would be next if um, and when, let's just say when, because we're gonna still believe in faith um, that Marcello's coming home. Oh, something in my eye. Life, that's when I think, this is the biggest struggle, of course, just trying to get him home, just trying to break the story. I feel like once his story does break, it's gonna be a matter of time before he's home. Because I've, I've heard many of these stories, y'all know I researched these stories, and once the person, um, people know about their story that's when people tend to jump aboard and help but as long as we don't know people who, who a person is see they got more that's the bulletin board there might need to check out how their celebration for memorial day is. oh memorial day no we don't go to a dog cypress grove park dog park community meeting <laughs> and then they have this memorial day celebration that might be nice to bring the kids out too but um yeah so don't know what i was saying <laughs> i was trying to jump right back into it uh smoothly but girl I, figured, I don't know what i was saying girl but marcello coming home oh yeah 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 so once someone knows his story i do think like i said once people know this man's story this man will be free so i think once the channel gets big enough that marcello's story is gaining um traction um you know that's when news media but i don't too much trust news media like that but that's why sometimes they want to start reaching out for a little story um the other thing that would be nice is if other larger youtubers would start um interviewing with me and trying to get me on their channel to tell their story and stuff like that so that would be you know that just gain that builds you up and that's what i want to do um also with my channel is help other people um who are wrongfully convicted their family members um get their stories big that's the whole purpose of my family united magazine that i created so that it is not so difficult for um, us to break the stories of our loved ones wrongful conviction so that's where you're going to spend most of the time looking for someone to listen that's where you're going to spend decades of this you know and then once somebody listens then um filing and you know the justice <laughs> the gears of justice move very slow or not at all right but one of the biggest part of your battle is going to be getting somebody that can help to listen um finding that one person and that's what project reach the world is for me that that looking for that person right but um once that happens whew, i almost can't even imagine this now this is really difficult because i've always had to at first you know the first few years um y'all know that i was told that marcello wouldn't do more than 10 years you know well he'll only do 10 years so the whole first part of my battle began to be just get let's get through these 10 years Keita, do whatever you gotta do better yourself raise your child make sure she's um, decent in life and, and race appropriately so that one day March can jump back in. We'll have as much as we can that this did never happen and we'll move forward. Um, but when they start getting so much past 10 years and he still was nowhere. Oh, I gotta walk a little closer because I felt rain drop. They over there playing soccer. 
There's another soccer game over there. Oh gosh. Then they got the gazebo. Look like they having a party or something. But um, yeah, so as it began to get further and further past 10 years, I started the only way to get through this was to stop counting down. Um, stop looking towards that day. Stop thinking when he comes home, everything's going to be okay. And stop even thinking that he's going to come home. Stop waiting. Don't hold your breath, Kita, like that. <sighs> Hoping when I do that, that's significant of me holding my breath for justice. And basically, I got to stop holding my breath for justice. I have to accept that this is the unjust world that we live in and that whatever um, family we're going to have, we're going to have with bars in between us, basically. So I came to acceptance of that um, about 19 years in on Marcello's um, sentence. I just uh, accepted that this is what it's going to be. And let's say 17 years in, that's when he was really, really close and that we were able to, every weekend, we were able to visit and stuff, which I never never foreseen that he would be sent back up the road now he's seven hours away from home that he would be sent up the road so i thought that he would from that part would stay close to home and it would just kind of be this prison wife and prisoner um situation i mean it would be nothing more nothing less <sighs> somewhere around 2020 when the great shutdown of the world happened um, I gotta get back because I don't want my tablet. What was that? Oh, that barbecue smells so good. But don't nobody barbecue. Girl, tastes like my daddy's barbecue. He makes the best. He is from Mississippi. And y'all know the folks in Mississippi can cook, girl. Everybody in Mississippi can cook. <laughs> But, um, and don't nobody beat my daddy. Let me tell you, with our church picnics back in the day, the people that thought they were barbecuing, they would just be burning. Now, my dad is from Mississippi, so he say boing. They would be boing that barbecue. It would just be so crispy and black. And they'd be like, mm -hmm. it's so good, it's so good. Girl, it wasn't until my dad cooked for them for one of them church picnics, church picnics, and it was like, oh, Mr. Dixon, you have got to do the cooking from now until forever until Jesus come back, <laughs> girl. But yeah, anyways, that was a side note. But somewhere around 2020, the great shutdown is when I started um, longing for my truck because I almost felt gypped. I'm like, I'm literally like, Jesus is actually coming back. <laughs> <laughs> which we we know that but it just felt like this is the time at hand and i was like wait a minute my husband never came home what are you are you kidding me world the, the world is over and he didn't come home <laughs> like i literally felt like like bamboozled like not bamboozled but hoodwinked that's what i felt like i felt like huh like i know i didn't believe all this long time i know i didn't sacrifice all this long time i know i did not fight all this long time and my husband ain't coming home girl <laughs> and then in part of my um prison wife communities and stuff i started seeing their their posting of their husbands coming home and not just the husbands that had light time it was the husbands of like Bro Clausen. Her husband came home and he had 213 years. And I'm like, what? A man with 213 years and they're, they're back together? <laughs> Surely a man with 40 years, you know, can come back home. And I started to believe again. And we are three years past that time, right? And Marcello still is not nowhere. They're coming home still. The only thing making him closer to home is that he's done so much of his wrongful conviction. So he is 21 years in on his um, wrongful 40-year sentence. So even that means he has only 19 more years um, if he had flat 40. But he does have some gain time. So that will knock it down to maybe 16 to 17 years. So though that is still a long a time 
that is a waitable amount of time. Um, the only thing that makes it not waitable is because I've waited for so long. <laughs> That's what makes it so unwaitable. I'm tired. I'm just over it. I'm sick of this um, being together apart stuff. I'm tired of these expensive bills and this and that. But I do know to be with my husband that is literally the only way we're going to be together. Um, so to get through this, I had to let it go. I had to let that hope, that dream go. Yeah, I had to bury that dream. I had to bury that hope. And now that it's buried, for him to get home, to come home, y'all, that's what y'all asking me. Oh my gosh. That would just be, I, I can't even put into no words. I literally don't even have no words about how that would be because now it is so unbelievable. It is almost like the most biggest dream of your life coming true. It's almost like winning the lottery or whatever big, huge um, dream that you've had for yourself or owning that multi-million dollar business. I almost feel like I could probably own a multi-million dollar business before I, Martel would be coming home to me, you know? So it's so unbelievable. But in your question, you're saying he does come home. <sighs> My God. First of all, we have got to make sure to cherish every single moment in life that we are together. Making the most of every single moment because we know how quickly it could be snatched and taken from us. So that means no taking for granted, not even a millisecond of our time together. Um, that means Marcello being able to be you know, with money, I have never been able, you know, Martella was taken from our family when money was only nine months old. So, I mean, money didn't know much about life. All she knew was she loved her father. And um, because they did build this significant bond while he was out on bond for seven months, he was wrongfully arrested when she was only two months old. Um, so for those seven months, um, they were together and separable and she loved him. She really did. And to now see that she's seeing him on the other side of this thick, massive glass that she would jump at um, and then look confused like, the heck, my daddy ain't picking me up for <laughs> Um, Y'all know I illustrated that basically, um, but to actually see them together and there's not, it's not at a visitation table. It's not with guards staring you down. It's not after driving seven to eight hours, depending on how sleepy I am, to go see him. It's being in the same room at the same time with your husband and your child my god that is and then him to actually be a part of our granddaughter's life um it is if if he does have to be you know do the rest of his wrongful conviction he's gonna miss most of the childhood um in person of miss princess growing up um so it's not only that he will be missing the first generation he will also um, unfortunately miss the second generation of our family But if he were here and able to just be with princes, look, someone over there riding an ATV. Girl, they doing everything out there, out here. I just love it. I can't wait to me and Marcello can hold hands and just walk through this park. That's one of the pastimes we used to love to do. Just walk, go to all different parks and outside and nature and stuff. But for him to be free like this, oh my God, it would be so amazing. I, I wouldn't even believe it's true. There would be no way for me to fathom that this is really, I'm awake and this is happening. These are things that happened in my dream. Wow. But yeah, he would be able to be with our, our granddaughter and holding her and girl, and I know it's going to be hard. We're going to make a whole separate video about that. It's definitely going to be hard because um, Martello has to, we, we can't live in La La Land, in fairy tale land, 
Martello has to be able to make a living. And how is he going to do that after 20 years of not even being in anybody's workforce, not having the experiences, not to even mention coming back to a world that is completely different of the world that he left. Nothing is like it was in 2001 when he was wrongfully, well, 2002 when he was wrongfully snatched away. Nothing is like it was in 2002. And I do want it to, in 2023, as it was in 2002. Wait, oh yeah, 20. So that means it was 22 years since the incident. Yeah, and 21 since he's been incarcerated wrongfully. But yeah, nothing's the same. This is a whole different world. He's going to have to learn technology. He's going to have to learn. Talk about a learning curve. Y'all know the heck that I went through going to college as an older adult, not knowing the technology of this time, not knowing um, things that children just know. They just know. Like my my um, nephew at six and seven was helping me with my graphic design work. Like, girl, the work that I thought was so freaking hard, he just knew. He's like, Kita, just change the, turn this layer off. And I'm like, what? And then the teacher is literally like, when is he coming to graphic design school? Because he's right on point. <laughs> so Marcello's going to have to go through that. He's never been through that. This world is so different. When he left in 2002, we, were, we barely even had cell phones. I remember he had the... Um, I had bought him the the prepaid phone. And I think I was on my mother's wireless plan. You know, those thick phones with the long antenna. And then we started, it started being the little Nokia. That was cuter where you could um, screw on the little antenna. And I had a little disco ball on mine. But um, that was the time when he left, when he was snatched from our family. You know, we are way far past that time in life. Um, so for him to get up to speed and to realize, and I think that's why a lot of the things that I try to explain to him about a lot of the issues of why we don't, he doesn't understand me and understand why I didn't get this done and why I didn't get that done. And I keep trying to tell him how fast life moves. He literally does not know this fast moving life, you know, where's my key? But y'all, thank y'all for joining me. Thank you for anyone that submitted any questions. Um, if you have any other questions, um, put them in the, in the uh, comment section. Um, I do have to get to the other five uh, questions that I was asked. I didn't know that I would ride out like this. So that means we do have to do a part two and however many more parts we have to do. All right, guys, it is 5.15. That just gives me just enough time to get home, change. Money going to be calling me momentarily because, you know, she'll be getting out of work. Um, but just enjoy your freedom, um, whatever portion of freedom you have, um, whether it's you're free out here, even though we're not 100% free out here. We do have boundaries upon our lives. Um, one of my biggest boundaries is this workshop stuff. Girl, trying to live life outside of working Ugh, most of your life. That is my biggest boundary um, and entrapment. But um, enjoy your level of freedom that you do have. You know, there's levels to freedom. We're all not on the same level. Those are There are those that are financially free. Um, there, there are those that's locationally free. There, there are those that's free from a workshop. There are those that are in prison. There are those that are on probation or house arrest. That's a lesser level of um, freedom than, um, it's more of a level of freedom than Marcello, but it's a lesser level of freedom than I have. Um, there's Marcello that even has a bit more freedom than those that are on the road and that those that are in maximum security, I had to learn that when he did have to go to maximum security, that, oh my gosh, we should have enjoyed the amount of freedom he had at that point in time. So the whole gist of it is just enjoy the amount of freedom that you have because somebody is wishing for that amount of freedom that you have. All right, guys. 
It's your girl, Cadillac. They are already calling me girl. <laughs>